Hello everyone. Okay, so this is the second time we're going to do some reading from the book that was recommended by Miss Jermack, our Grange librarian, for year fives. Um, that's just an in, that's just an indicator guide. I mean, anybody can read along with us. Um, I haven't really got into this book yet, but let's go for second chapter. So it's Emily Sparks and the Friendship Fiasco by Ruth Fitzgeralds. So chapter two, Echo Disaster, Tuesday morning. I have given in and put Agatha on the list. I suppose it's better than no name at all, but I'm not hopeful. I can't even get mum and dad to look at it at the moment. It's like having zombie parents. They're taking absolutely no responsibility for me. This morning I had to get my own breakfast. Find the remote, which was not easy, as Dad had put it on the phone charger. Turn the TV to the right channel and open the curtains in the living room. Then there was no school uniform washed, so Mum actually got it back out of the washing basket. She said, you don't have to have clean clothes every day, you know. Like we're in Tudor times or something. I told her it smelled and I wasn't going around in a cloud of baby sick all day. So she stuck it in the tumble dryer with a sheet of bounce. After that, it just smelled like a baby had been sick in a spring meadow. But there was no more arguing because she was feeding Yoda. And for all that she needs, total calm. And for that, she needs total calm or the baby gets excitable milk and won't sleep again. Dad gets the same thing with coffee. I think mum wishes we were in Tudor time. She doesn't like anything modern anymore. Since getting pregnant, she's gone completely environment crazy. She said, this time around, I'm going to do everything right, which makes me worried, which makes me worry what she got wrong the first time, which was obviously with Emily. So that she'll grow up environmentally friendly. Yoda's bedroom is all wood and organic stuff. Grant says organic wasn't invented when she had her babies, but they turned out all right. Anyway, Yoda's not allowed to sleep in her own room yet. Really, it's a waste, especially when we haven't got an actual playroom anywhere in the house. I'm sure I'm the only person I know who hasn't got a playroom. Well, a apart from Gracie and Daniel and Babette and Nicole and Joshua Radcliffe, but he lives in a yurt, which is a big tent like you have on a holiday but they're not on holiday so it's not normal at all and anyway he's probably got a play yurt. Amy Lee Langer total class bully type person says her new baby sister's room is pink absolutely everything Bella says that that's totally sick making but it's okay for her to say that even Amy Lee Langer can't get her in Wales Mum doesn't agree with pink. Yoda's room is painted in pale bamboo. Really, it should be called school lunch cabbage. Mum says it's calming. I think mum should put pale bamboo in her room too. She got very stressy when dad said he was going back to work today. But like Gran says, it's all very well her having babies, but somebody's got to pay the bills around you. The worst thing mum has done echo-wise, though, is sell her car. It was only a small one, so I'm sure it wasn't destroying much of the planet. She says she's going to use the money to buy a smart baby buggy. She said she wants a proper one this time and not a second-hand rust bucket like I had. You don't need to sell your car, love, Dad said. I'm sure we can afford a hundred pounds or so. A hundred pounds, Mum said. That won't get us one wheel of anything decent. I want a baby Echo Jogger Deluxe and I can go running with the baby and get fit. I could even jog down to the market. Who needs supermarkets? Who needs a car? I was nodding and smiling at her for the sake of a peaceful life when I had a disturbing thought. But mum, if you haven't got a car, how am I supposed to get to school? Walk, she said, as if this was a perfectly sensible idea. It takes 20 minutes to walk to my school. By the time I get there, I won't be in a fit state to learn anything. Anyway, we're usually late, even with a car. I told Gran about the walking thing and she said mum was playing fast and loose with my safety for the sake of a few trees. When I told mum this, she said, Fine, I'll walk with you. It'll do us all good. She has an answer for everything, even Gran. Luckily, we don't have to start the walking thing till next week. 
as mum hasn't managed to get around to buying the baby Echo Jogger Deluxe yet. And double luckily, dad's going to take me to school till then in his van. I like dad's work van. It's quite smart and has a personalized number plate. L33K5RS. It's supposed to say Leaks R Us. Which is the name of the plumbing company he works for. But they couldn't get the A. So it sort of says Leaks R Us. Dad says... It doesn't matter, but I think this could be very confusing for people who might think they are getting a delivery of vegetables, especially if the leak was in the kitchen. I went to Dad's office once and I asked his boss if there were any if there were ever any problems in this area, but he just said, Oi, who brought a flaming kid in here? So I'm none the wiser, really. Anyway, Dad is in a very good mood this morning. It's his first day back to work since Yoda was born and he's been whistling the whole way. Everything is fine till I'm just getting out of the van at school. Then he says really quickly, by the way, Gavin's mum is bringing you home this afternoon. As if it is perfectly responsible to allow your child to be collected from school by any random person who happens to have a spare seat. I'm only halfway through saying, are you mad? I'm not going home with gross out Gavin. And he drives off. Okay. That, I got a little bit more into it there in chapter two. Chapter 3 coming soon.